Hi, this is Suzanne Deverman, and I'm here with... Alan Steinfeld. And Steinfeld has a show. Would you tell me what time that show comes on? Well, the show is called New Realities, and it's on 9 p.m. every Monday night, and it's an exploration of body, mind, spirit. What channel? Channel 57. Monday nights, 9 p.m. So do you know what I'm talking about when I say no. the exploration of body, mind, spirit? Please continue. Would well, you have any idea what that might mean? Wholeness. Yeah, exactly. So we're moving from a kind of um, mechanized society where we think we're machines to one where we're more, uh, I guess, sensitive, more artistic, more expressive. That sort of brings wholeness together. And the spiritual side is not about religion, it's about what the essence behind the religion is. But what do you think about religion? Oh, well, shoot, you know, I, I like spirit. If I walk down the street, you know, spirit can move me, you know, from point A to point B, and that's what I love. Mm -hmm. But religion is more mucky and and let's face it, you know, it's, it's, it, if it rang true, it wouldn't be so mysterious. So mm -hmm. it, 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 it's kind of, it's a community place where you meet and... So it's a social thing. It's, but, but the spirit, as you were saying, I think is mysterious. But, you know, I've been thinking, you know, so but, we understand what... Yeah, but mysterious in a logical way. <laughs> in, in mysterious in Just a like way. Just like the wind, you know it's there, you can feel it, but you but can't see it. But what is it, right. You can't see love, but you know when it's there. Right, so in my program, I've looked at the three ways that we've tried to understand the world. Science, religion, and art. Well, science and religion try to explain it to you, explain the mystery, but art, you become the mystery. So there's no explanation ultimately because there is nothing to explain. And those are the, that's the highest transcendent truth. And you know who, who what is that guy's name, Sting? He mm -hmm. says he, in that song, I don't, uh, he doesn't believe in, you know, science, he doesn't believe in religion, and, and. I think John Lennon said that. Well, I he might have said. I don't believe in Beatles, I just believe in me, Yoko and me, that's reality. That's better. Anyway, it's, but so Sting said that and, yeah, no, Sting is very much in alignment with a lot of the concepts that, are, um, that I think is part of the new paradigm. Because the old paradigm's not working, is it? No, it's run its course. Yeah, like... It's uh, no fun anymore. Someone on Paula's show said it looks like medicine is in the way of healing, education's in the way of learning, um, science is in the way of discovery. All these truths that we created institutions around are now in the way of us going to the next level. So I think it's really interesting that we can build a new paradigm based on pure experience. Who said that? Michael Elner. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. What was yeah, the um, also, you know, like the colleges, you know, they don't really get people's interest. Like, you know, when there's a disconnect because they're not teaching in a, in a fun way. Like the like, you know, from calculus, elementary functions. How do you get to physics? You know, they, there's like a disconnect where you want to teach people where it has reality in life, so that they want to learn, so that everything's just not, you know, cold-hearted gathering facts, and hopefully you'll learn you'll learn them down the line. You know, you know, right. why 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 are you going to use all this? I wish when I learned you know, basic algebra, because the concept is really neat. You don't have to have the X, the third entity, to figure out, to see what it is. But I wish they would have, now that I'm older and haven't really paid attention to it, I wish they would have applied it, just a few of those concepts in reality, so I could have used those today, instead of figuring, thinking that I was just gonna figure out by magic how to use them. So what is your, what's the name of the show? The Suzanne Defferman Show. And what's the theme? Just well, people and what? what? Um, we're going to morph into the to Hurricane Ike and and the Suzanne Defferman Show. At, what's Hurricane Ike? Well, basically, it, it it encompasses boxing, press conferences, 
and I've been attending them and having boxers hold up my book and it's still not selling. What's your book? <laughs> my book is called The Marine and um, you can go to www.themarinebook.com. What's it about? Well, you know, it's a it's it's about me, my dear boy, and a marine. It's a it's a it's a love story and basic, you know, uh, 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 it's four months out of out of my life where I really dug into what the feeling of of love is and tried to decipher it and give healing uh, uh, antidotes from <laughs> from other sources like the story of you and how to create a new one. Very important. If you don't like who you are right now, there's a couple different ways to change it. One is to literally overwhelm it with a new story. So you can't think of the old story anymore, just get busy. And pretty soon that old story's gone and you've made the leap. Great, is that something you came up with? No, I had an aid, the tool of um, the story of you, it's a book, and how to create a new one. And it also said something which other people don't differentiate between little words that can really screw you up. Like what? Like the difference between happiness and pleasure. If you don't know the if you don't know the difference, pleasure can kill you. Sound but, but wait, doesn't pleasure, isn't people think that pleasure leads to happiness? Pleasure never led to happiness for anybody. Really? Ever. And you know from experience. When and you, me too, I guess. We all know, we all okay. think, but we all think pleasure is what happens. Paula okay. too. And I'll explain to you really briefly. Tell me. Okay, let's say you're a guy, you're seeing a lot of girls and you're doing coke. That seems like it's pleasure. Or you're just somebody who ate a piece of chocolate cake and maybe another one. And you one. feel good, though. You, you feel, feel good, good, but pleasure's a trick. You don't feel good an hour later. Where's pleasure? So you happiness know, is what makes you feel so pleasure is like water, you can't grasp it, it flows through you. No, pleasure is destructive, it's a trick. It's destructive? Well, because the second piece of chocolate cake, or the guy who's partying with cokes and uh, coke and drugs and girls, where's the pleasure an hour later, two hours later? When you're, so you're saying it's a when, waste when you're of miserable, money. When you're, when you're totally miserable. Happiness is, is not eating that piece of chocolate cake, not going out drinking and drugging, and systematically walking down you know, the, the, the lane is feeling like you had a sense of accomplishment. Wow, that's great. No, what other feeling thing? Feeling peace. I love that, Susan. That is brilliant. What else, Tim? What other kind of distinctions do you make? Um, the difference between Well, you know what? Words? I heard somebody else, and I hope I didn't tape over it. He described two other words that were just as Tell similar me. that you could get in just as big a trouble with if you didn't know the difference. And that will be the next time. I will, oh, come I will on. because I don't know. I, you don't remember the I, words I were? taped it off the TV thinking I was going to look at it again later, and hopefully I still have that. And then, you don't know what those two words no, are? No, I do not. But there's a lot of things in our society that are along those lines. We think if we have a big house or a lot of money or whatever, that it's going to bring us happiness, but it doesn't. What brings us happiness is being content with oneself. Oh. I agree, right? and more to the point, people don't know how to be content with, with oneself, so we need to give them a road map, maybe just taking one step, baby steps in front of the other and trying to get to your dream. Keep on pushing forward. Like, are you content with yourself? Because I am content with myself. And I just maybe accept you, myself maybe, for who I am. Maybe you've reached, I, I know I'm more content when I'm making money. You are? Yes. But isn't that another illusion, thinking that you have money will bring happiness? It's the same, same as pleasure. What brings you happiness has nothing to do with pleasure or money or... Oh yeah, I got it. Here's what's gonna bring uh, me happiness, I finally decided, because it's brotherhood. You know, crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Get out there and start making friends with everybody and get to know people. Because when you came from a big family and your cousins came in, weren't you, you know, for the Christmas holidays or even for the summer, weren't you more happy with the synergy of other people around? That's one thing. But these, I like the idea of stories and creating new stories. I like the idea of social connection. But I still think happiness has nothing to do with the outside world. It's how one feels about oneself 
when one is alone with yourself, when I'm alone with myself, how do I feel when I wake up in the morning? As long as you were consistent and baby steps and got to one goal that you wanted to achieve to the other, whether it was reading a book or, or, or half a book or, what about, or, or doing the things that you needed to do that day, what then about you have great doing? satisfaction. What, what about just being? What about That's what I'm trying to say. We are human beings, right? Oh. We're just being, not doing. If we can just be at peace with being, like in this moment. Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> but that's what, that's what I'm hoping and wanting that's, to achieve. That's a great distinction. Would you elaborate on that? We are human beings. We should just be. Because in our natural state of being, everything that wants to get done gets done through us and with us. It's not, we don't have to do anything. The doing is happening in the being. And it's just finding that place of contentment that allows this being to unfold inside ourselves, to open up and expand. And that will bring us happiness and peace and contentment and actually pleasure as well. But pleasure is only a byproduct from all that. It's not the thing we seek. If you seek pleasure, you won't find it. But if you seek happiness, you'll find pleasure and everything that comes along with that. So aren't you feeling more content and peaceful right now? Just by being, you're not doing anything. Alan's got me in a, in a hypnotic state. She's becoming part of my cult. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the cult of personality. Yeah, and that's what our society has think. Uh, when, I'm, when you're famous, that's going to be bring you happiness. When you're, you know, all these things. And it might, it might actually help, but it's not going to be the thing. It's an inside job, as I say. Being peace is an inside job. Yes. So what will bring you, what is it that you feel will bring you that sense of uh, tranquility? Well, first of all, you know, I, I'd love to hurry up and pay the bills and then have enough time to just be. But so after your bills are paid and everything, let's say they're all paid, like right now, being present is what's bringing us peace, right? We're present with each other. I'm looking in your beautiful eyes. I should have never drank that coffee. <laughs> but if you let the mind relax, this is what I also teach. If you just let the mind relax and you find yourself right here on the chair and feeling all the tension in your face and all the tension in your, you just feel it with awareness, then it starts to change and you start to feel you're here. Just me and you. Yeah, where's the tissues? Is that, why, <laughs> why, is that bringing up sad? No, everything's good. No, but no, what you say is good. It's very calming. But that's, that's what I'm hoping. That is the new realities I'm talking about. That peace. All this other stuff is to, just to get us right here on the chair, Susan. Right here, me and you. Hi. Come give me your kindness. In your arms, I know I'll find this. <laughs> Alan, don't you know with you, I'm born again. <laughs> mm, you have a great voice. Do you get pleasure and joy from singing? Let's say joy, not pleasure, joy. Um, I just try to communicate a message. And what is that? But that message was a little too long. Usually if I sing, I just want to communicate just a short little verse. If I go on too long, then it's like, hey, chick, stop singing. No, <laughs> you should sing the whole song because no, no. it's really, that was peaceful for me. That brought me contentment. There's a quality in your voice that I, that's beyond the personality. I think that's what the essence of true art is, is to transcend the personality with the beingness, going back to being. It's going back to when you're a kid where you're not afraid to take those chances around a more relaxed setting, you know, around relatives and everything where you could cut up a little and just kind of act a little different, a little kooky. Mm -hmm. Like when we were at the grocery store, I'm going to take this off for a second. My cousin, uh -huh. my grandma would be in one aisle and my cousin was always having to be so straight up and everything. But when we were at the grocery store and grandma was in the other aisle, she would do pirouettes. Here, let me see if I can get in the camera. Pirouettes, you know, pirouettes. You know how she would do like a, a ballet? <laughs> a ballet thing and just lie down. Yeah. Uh, like, because she knew Grandma couldn't whip around that, that aisle fast enough, you know, to catch her. 
and that was kind of a kooky thing to do, but, you know, to let off some steam. But you know what would be kooky for you? I'd love to hear you sing a whole song. Can no, you sing? Come no. on. No, no. Come on, just sing me something. No. Because you're no, so because good. What, what you're you, such a good What you don't understand is when you're when you're a singer, you prepare a song ahead of time. That means well, you do your... Sing, you are a singer. Yeah, but you've what, been what, what you do is you do your, your vocal exercises. You, you, you don't... You know, I'm... I'm not a professional singer. But you have a great voice. But I have performed on stage before. But that takes preparation. Oh, sing me the um, Mar what, that, that's Marilyn Monroe classic. No, no, I'm a singer that always prepares ahead of time. I don't just, you know, I'll do it. Will you sing on my show? Sure. OK. Yeah. So what is it that you want for yourself? Um, what do you want for yourself? OK, I'm glad you asked me. <laughs> I want to find that peace. I definitely do have goals. I'm not, I haven't transcended that. I want to accomplish my goals. I want to um, communicate what my show is about, this understanding of new realities. How do we think differently? How do we become different people? How do we uplift the common humanity so we can all function at a level of being and joy and peace? I want that for myself and for the people I know. I, yeah, for yourself and the people you know, because I think, you know, it, it does feel, it is a good feeling to be all inclusive, because when I walk out of here, I know I have a show in the future, it might be a weekly show that's one hour a week, so I'm making friends with everybody, because the counter behind the clerk at Jack's 99 cent store, nobody's good enough for me. I want everybody on the show. You want everyone on the show? Well, that's I a have huge to, guest because list. there can be an uh, audience, you know? It's uh, synergy. Get as many people as you can until you can get, maybe after we get it going, then maybe we could be more selective. Right. You know? So you want your shows about communicating to the masses. Uh, you know, and Jack's been putting on uh, like a Soul Train thing. Paula, do you want to comment on that? Was that nice? Yeah, it was really great. You know, there was a lot of nice shots. And, I mean, there's a lot of ways you can go on all of this. You've got about, uh, it's 17 minutes. You've got about eight minutes left, or no, 10 minutes. So, you know. Well, keep asking me questions yeah, about yeah. my show, because there's a lot of people I've interviewed that I think are really making a difference in the world. Yeah. Um, I mean, I love Deepak Chopra. And he's been on my show no a few way. times. Get out of yes. here. Yes. I love Deepak Chopra. You know what I like about him is that he's a great communicator and he can he can transcend the world of science and consciousness. And this is where we're going, creating um, a bridge between so there's like two ways of looking at the world. Either it's concrete, has nothing to do with humanity, or it has everything to do with consciousness and, and, and who we are as beings. So there's these polarities that we're seeing. A world made out of solid matter, a world made out of awakening of thought. How do we bridge the two? So Deepak's one person, I feel, who can really bridge the two. And in that appeal to public audiences, he's, he's helping to create the new realities as well. And, this is, and there's lots of people. Bruce Lipton's been a guest on my show. He does it with science. He's saying that the awareness in the cell was of the reality around us. And evolution happened when we gained greater awareness. And this is what we're in now, this um, um, epic of gr gaining greater awareness. And a lot of shows also have to do with the awareness of UFOs, ETs, extraterrestrials, higher consciousness. I think they are here. But our human view has been so narrow like this. We've been looking out a window like this. And the whole view is opening up about what reality really is. And when we do open up, we gain a sense that we are not alone in the universe, that we're not limited to just this three-dimensional world, that the, uh, we're not even limited to this body. Your consciousness extends way beyond that body. So. Another, another person who's been on the show is Lynn McTaggart, and she says, we exist in a field. You know how the wireless um, internet is there, and it's in a field, and you just pick it up, and it's just coming to you, the signals are coming to you. We're, we're trading signals all the time. You know, I'm picking up your frequencies, you're picking up my frequencies, and this is where the understanding of psychic development, remote viewing, 
even things like astral projection. It all happens in the field. Your memory is actually contained in the field. It's not contained in your brain. The brain accesses the field. But who you are is in the field of energy that's, that's around you. So you don't end with your body. You end with the field, which is really endless. There's degrees of that. So we're transmitting to each other energy right now. Do you feel that? I wish I hadn't drank that coffee. That's really messed me up. No, don't worry about that. You know, it's it made me on guard. It's made me Are you on fearful guard? a little. What are you, fearful you know, about? introverted. Tell me, talk to me. No, it's the coffee. It's but chemical. But what is it that you're on guard about? Because if you can, if you have an awareness of that, you don't have to let the chemical um, control you. So go to the place where you can see what you're, what's happening, and talk from the place beyond that. I am a localized disturbance in the grid. <laughs> that well that's I like what, that. let's say you make a big problem you're doing drugs and you you know you lash out and you 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 Deepak Chopra said you're a localized disturbance in the gri in the in the in the grid and I that, like that. kind of puts it all into into perspective Isn't that negative no. no. It, it's like a spider web. The spider, the spider no. web, it's ver the it's vibrant. The localized disturbance is your presence in the universe. It's not a disturbance say in a negative way. It's a disturbance in your adding to the grid. Well, if, if you like. I mean, that's how I see that. Yeah, like, like, let's say, you know, you make a big, big mistake and you did drugs and your head's all over the place and you're thinking this thought because you're isolated and that's, that's, uh, uh, ma made you but more powerful to think maybe in your own mind. Why do people do drugs is what I, I'm, why do they do alcohol? Why do they do that? What everybody is it make, that they want? Everybody makes mistakes. No, but what do the, people want when they do that? Well, you know what? It's right there for you. They, it's legal. But what's it Hello? doing for them? What do they hope it, it, for it okay, to do? We're, like Walden's Pond, we're, we're just people in our time. That Now, if you look at Lindsay Lohan getting, getting caught up in the legal system, this is crazy. This is what all of our kids are getting caught up in our yeah. time. Um, so this is what's going on right now. We're just a product of our time, and these, these things are pushed on us. So what would be your solution to get Lindsay Lohan off of drugs? No, it's, it's the whole United States. It's kids from coast to coast, so from sea to shining sea. What's the solution? How would you help that? Well, you know, it starts, okay, I heard somebody say something in, interesting. He, he said, oh, it was on Harold Channon's show, he says there's there's uh, five, maybe seven categories we need to put things in, and this is so true. One category I remember is medical. Medical includes foods. Medicine is a food, so that is all encompassed because everything's so disjointed and disconnected. Broccoli spray, sprayed with poison. You know, cows are getting hormones, and, and, and that affects me when I eat that beef. And I've noticed the, the chicken at D'Agostino's one time, I, I was bodybuilding and I was eating the same thing every day and my blood turned like water. It, it did? Even the blood of my period and I was like, I knew right then it was, it, was, it was the, ch the chicken at D'Agostino's. Because it had no life force in it? No, pro who knows where they're getting it? Everything's it's a world. The chicken is the worst. It's I a think. worldwide market out there. We could be getting vegetables, nothing, what, we don't even know if anything's grown locally. If you don't know who grows the food, you do That's why I go to the farm. You know, it's market, weird. You know? You're getting steak from, from, from overseas. What happened to good old American cows that are grazing on our plush pastures in Missouri and, and, and What happened to those American cows? Oh, wait, wow. That's what I learned from, the, up in Albany from the Citizens Against Marijuana Prohibition. They said we have acres and acres and acres that are not being planted with anything. You don't see any fat cows. Why? We, sh we used to have that all in New York. Why are they not being planted with cows? I, I guess it's factory farming, all the dairies going on down in Arizona, but I'm saying, how does all that knowledge make you feel right now? And Alan, you'll feel good right now if they're playing your show on. Who? New Realities is being played on the remote monitor. It is? Ray Hurtock and JJ Hurtock. It is? Yeah. I'm feeling good about that. You yeah, see? There it is. It's just Success what, makes Friday me feel good. Yes. It's and, on. And that's why we need to jump. As soon as we get enough practice in at, at Manhattan Neighborhood Network, who we love, uh, Stephanie, Chris, all those people are my buddies and more buddies to be. And 
Uh, we have to jump to a paid channel, don't we? Yeah. Or, or the new well, internet's coming no, around, YouTube, I mean. But Susan, what is most important to you? Right now, I, I'm really gonna say it's every, in a collaboration with other people, it's every man for themselves. I have to pay my rent and I'm really sinking like a stone. And I wanna help be able to hold my head up high. You know, and I wanna do what I love to do and I wanna pay the bills with, with that. Jandra. It's just like I heard on another Herald Channel show, he, he was well, interviewing a, a guest. He says, Harold writers Channel. are doing everything. What? I don't know what channel you're on. Repeat your channel again. Channel 57. But no, what did you Channel see? 57, Monday but, at 9 but, p.m. Yeah, but what did you hear on Harold's show? New realities. Show? What did you hear on Harold's show? That all the writers are writing, but they're not getting paid. That's what my profession's all about. Where's the pay? Everybody wants Which to Which profession do you mean? You know, videographer, you know, being on camera. It's like you can. This is such a complex, uh, it takes years and years to learn, and everybody wants it for free. You know, I mean, when do you tie this into making some money? Send it in donations. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best I can do. No, you're good. You're really educated, you're intelligent. Yeah, and she's articulating you're, the problem. And you're a good communicator, yeah. So I think you have a future in this so business. So writers have the same problem. They, they, they can write, but they're not getting paid. You know, well, maybe would it be great if no one had to get paid for every anything, and we just had everything abundant and Wait, available to us? No more wage slaves. We gotta stop taking a paycheck. That's what Gaddafi said on the Harold Jenner show. Gaddafi said that. And it sounds so ridiculous, but the real thing is, you have to be a partner. You can't take a paycheck because wage slaves. So if you're a partner. It's better because this is that everybody eventually will be taken care of. I mean, it's not the few at the top sucking all the money up to them, and you're going to work for below minimum wage. Because let's face it, minimum wage sucks. Get out of here. So what's the solution? The solution is no more paychecks, no more wage. So everyone wages. becomes a partner. You have to be a partner. The IRS is a racket, and I want to be a partner to it. I want to be a partner to the racket. <laughs> kind of like that. There's no more wage slaves. So you have to be a partner if you're going to be in the game, and then maybe everybody can look around yes, and see a little more clearly the when they system. have some money. We, we have to address monopoly because even marijuana we, has a monopoly involved. We have to address the banking system. We have to address the economy. Oh, come on. You know what? We. I don't know enough about this because Paula is educating me with Harold Channer and and Alan Steinfeld, yes. And repeat your show again. Well, it's been great to be on your show, Susan. Repeat I the show. I appreciate your philosophy too. My show is New Realities. It's on every Monday night, Channel Fifty Seven, and it's an exploration and that's 9 into PM. consciousness and who we are. Thanks for warming my hands thanks up. You, thanks for warming me. And Alan has really? the most beautiful blue eyes, and mm. Alan looks rich, doesn't he? Thanks. Oh, let's, that... pro let's share that profit together. <laughs> thanks, Susan. Well, thank you. Good luck with your show. <laughs> what? Be a partner. Be a partner. Here, shake on it. Thanks. Good luck with your show, the Susan Deberman Show. Thank I you. I recommend it. Everything's a collaboration. Mm. Even this. Even this.